Hello everyone, welcome to the new episode in Founder Series. Today we have a co-founder and chief product officer of Jingle Bed, uh, Mr. Sudarshan Babu. Sudarshan Babu has co-founded a few other startups uh, before launching Jingle Bid in 2020. Jingle Bid is a reverse auction based e-commerce platform that connects buyers with local sellers to enable the best deal for consumers uh, with the promise of instant delivery. So let's hear more from uh, Sudarshan on this. Thank you so much for doing this interview for us. Hi, Manudia. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure and thanks for uh, uh, having us today. Yeah. So uh, we'll uh, straight away get into the questions. Um, can you uh, tell us a little bit about Jingle Bit first and how you came up with an idea? And I, I'm also curious about the name uh, Jingle Bit. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So uh, we start with a very simple concept. So the idea is pretty simple. So um, whatever we are looking for uh, to buy online, right? So whether it can be a mobile phone or it can be a laptop or whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's available in a store near to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, two things, one is that uh, you're not aware of uh, uh, the stock availability in stores near to you for the particular model or whatever you're looking for. And if it's available with more than one store, mm -hmm. who will be able to give you the best price? Mm -hmm. So these are the two main challenges uh, uh, we start, I mean like start focusing on, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, this started in, I mean, like as a concept, as an idea, uh, how it happened was like, I was looking to buy a refrigerator uh, for my office. Mm -hmm. So what happened was like, I figured out uh, the model. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I went to one particular store. They gave me a pricing. Okay. With that price, uh, a typical Indian, whatever it will do at that moment, <laughs> I went to the next store with the pricing and they gave me a 5% uh, discount from that pricing. Okay. With that price, again, I came back to the first store mm -hmm. and uh, they said, okay, I'll match the price and give you a stabilizer as well. So this is long <laughs> story short. But in this particular exercise, I realized two things. Mm -hmm. You got to have time mm -hmm. uh, to do this, right? So almost half day went on it, uh, checking the price of a couple of stores. Mm -hmm. Other thing is, if there is a simple mechanism where I'm able to find out the pricing with different stores, mm -hmm. uh, and if I can accept one particular price, mm -hmm. it's very simple, right? They can deliver the product to me. So this is how uh, the core idea uh, is being conceptualized. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular concept, uh, uh, we named it as, I mean, like we found out that it's called a reverse option. So just like eBay, mm -hmm. eBay is an auction uh, platform, right? Yeah. Where you say that this is the product I'm going to sell, who is going to give the best price, uh, uh, we'll sell it to you, right? So here it's reverse. So you're going to say that this is the product I'm planning to buy, mm -hmm. whoever gives you the uh, lowest price, mm -hmm. uh, I'll select it and you can deliver the product. So this is how uh, the basic concept uh, we started working on. Okay. A later point of time, uh, this particular thing, uh, or what we started as a, a pricing engine, uh, evolved. So mm -hmm. I would say like there are a lot of uh, missing pieces in the local commerce. Uh, like you know, the, the sellers near you don't have any knowledge on what product is trending on or, or what is the customer requirement, those kind of informations. Right. So there are a lot of inconsistency in data. Mm -hmm. So they... Uh, stock different uh, uh, variants of products but mm -hmm. customers are looking for different variants right for example if you take one particular uh, iphone uh, the black might be the one uh, the customers are looking for but uh, he'll be stocking some other mm -hmm. one right so right. a simple example so uh, that's that's those are the things we started figuring out while we're doing uh, this for past two years and mm -hmm. we started bridging up those gaps Excellent, excellent. And also on the name, uh, why, why is it called Jingle Bit? Oh, the bit part I understand, but yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So dot .com domain is something that uh, is very difficult to get, right? So okay. we were searching with different different combinations. Man, my wife suggested that. Uh, okay, Jingle is something you do with the bell, right? And uh, okay. bit is 
Okay, so that's I jingle bit and we got it. Right <laughs> during the auctions, which they do. Okay, that's that's clever actually. That's clever. <laughs> nice, super. So uh, you know, our previous logo had a hammer as well. Oh, so okay. uh, typical auction site, but uh, now we completely uh, coming out of it actually. So we are focusing on the local commerce part more than uh, auction engine or pricing engine. Right, right. So when you say that you are focusing on the local uh, commerce part, and in a country where there are already many, you know, giants in e-commerce like Amazon or Flipkart or even eBay, which you mentioned right now. So, uh, what do you think you are doing different to stand apart or you know to survive against these giants? So that's a great question. So what happens was like so these. Uh, let's take Amazon uh, mm-hmm. as the first uh, thing. So okay. they they are the pioneers who built uh, all this uh, warehouse model and right. inventory based uh, commerce as we see now. Right. Uh, and the Flipkart replicated the same uh, model which were being done by Amazon with mm-hmm. few uh, uh, changes on it. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, th- this particular business model is very efficient in countries like United States or Europe. Mm-hmm. Where the big box retail is already there, I mean like Walmart or Target, mm-hmm. those kind of big, big, uh, uh, I mean like store based, mm-hmm. uh, big the giants are there. Mm-hmm. So they just replicated the warehouse model where uh, they stock the products and move it right. Okay. But India, yeah. India is a little different from the entire supply chain point of view where we have multiple small stores. It's true. And they are covered by distributors and they are covered by brands, right? There are three mm-hmm. tires. Yes. Right. So all we had to do is make this uh, stores really smarter. Uh, so mm-hmm. once you give this information, for example, uh, these are the headphones that the uh, customers are looking for, and this is the price you can price this particular product, uh, so that you can get more leads on it. This becomes powerful. So when it comes to for in city, almost. We, it looks like an, another Amazon or another Flipkart. When you go to Tier 2 or Tier 3 city, okay. they, the entire supply chain is broken. So we, they don't get the products which we get over here, uh, all the products which we're looking mm-hmm. at, right? So that is a supply chain issue. The, mm-hmm. the thing is like uh, a small store in, let's say, uh, a place like Pondicherry, Mm-hmm. They're not able to stock a particular iPhone uh, mm-hmm. because it's very expensive to stock, right? Right. So instead, they will stock headphones, accessories, mm-hmm. and all those stuff. But customers are looking for iPhone. So this particular gap is what we are looking to bridge. So we help mm-hmm. them with the demand information. A uh, customer is looking for this particular iPhone or something like that. So he starts mm-hmm. stocking those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this becomes uh, powerful. So uh, so we create a chain of smart stores, which we call it a jingle bit smart store, where we give information like uh, you stock this uh, 20 or 50 products. We go to the next store. We, they, we ask them to stock different varieties of uh, products. So there will be a wide variety of products stocked by a group of uh, retailers or sellers or smart stores. So once you activate this particular chain of stores, it becomes powerful. You will be able to get products on the same day, and uh, you get large uh, variety of products. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, cust- and there is no dead inventory. So, for example, I am a small store. The biggest problem I face is like I uh, keep stock of certain product which doesn't move, right? Okay. So okay. here, the, the we are stocking the products which are going to. Move. So the info. Uh, we give valuable information to them, like what price to be uh, priced, so mm-hmm. uh, so that you can sell more. Okay. So this kind of information, we provide them all the infrastructure, right, from logistics mm-hmm. and uh, payment mm-hmm. solution and everything, so that the transaction completes uh, without any issue. So this creates more business to a small store, mm-hmm. and the uh, flywheel happens. Right. Right. So, so you are trying to bring the a faster delivery advantage to even the smaller cities or the tier two cities as well. Which exactly we are empowering the empowering the local commerce through local Got stores. Mm-hmm. All we have to give is provide them with the right data mm-hmm. uh, on the demand and help them to create the demand. So we take up the demand part of it. Mm-hmm. They are going to take care of the supply part of it. 
Okay. If there is, uh, they are struggling with capital. We are coming up with capital solutions also, so that uh, there is no working capital uh, block, and uh, that's it. So we provide the infrastructure where they can right. uh, do this business very efficiently. Okay, wonderful. So, so this demand part, which you said, like you will be helping the smaller stores understand the demand part. So, how are you guys analyzing the demand part? How how are you getting to know? Do you use any tools or how how do you go about that? Yeah, we have uh, many. We are not dependent on one particular tool. We are okay. dependent on many tools, and okay. uh, uh, we have created our own customized tools as well, okay. so that we can nice. crawl uh, prices from different sources. Okay. And uh, so it's not. I wouldn't say that this is but one particular thing we are following. So okay. mm-hmm. that is a separate team who takes care of. Pricing because pricing is the uh, biggest value we provide to the customer. Right. So we make sure that uh, we are pricing every product at the we make the sellers to price it at a very competitive way so mm-hmm. that uh, they can compete with big giants as we said. Okay. So that's the thing. Uh, I would say like there is a lot of manual activity as well where they go to different different sites, crawl those uh, prices and those mm-hmm. things. We have tools as well, so we depend on both. Okay. Okay. So, so you uh, right now, are you like ma- ma- manually uh, uh, checking in what area? That, was, that like, also like for that? certain products. Okay. Okay. So, uh, as you certain... scale up, do you plan to automate this? Because I mean, as you scale up, I don't think it would be possible for you to manually do. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. We are building the tools. That's our uh, lesson now. Okay. We are. We are already built it. We are adding intelligence to it. Right. Right. Wonderful. So, so you will be integrating that with your website and app. Correct. Okay. So, um, uh, talking about your users, how how are you uh, acquiring your users right now? Uh, right now, uh, we are focusing uh, majorly on content-driven uh, marketing. Okay. Uh, so we do multiple influencer content because the concept is kind of new to the customer. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's it's I wouldn't say that it's totally a different app compared mm-hmm. to any other e-commerce app, but. Uh, you you will have a button called get prices where you click on it and after that you receive prices and once right. you accept it, mm-hmm. uh, the mm-hmm. transaction happens, right? Mm-hmm. So these kind of flows are a little new. Uh, right. So uh, the content driven marketing is something that is working for us where uh, we educate the customer about uh, what is Jinglebit is all about mm-hmm. and why they should use Jinglebit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So these two communications are happening through content-driven marketing where we use influencers okay. and uh, other uh, uh, content creators so so that we reach the customer in the right way. And after that, regular uh, retention strategies like pop push notifications. Right. Wonderful, wonderful. So, um, uh, you're concentrated more on the influencer mar- marketing or using your own customers to market yes. rather it's than more of content-driven marketing. Yes. Right, right. Wonderful. So, um, also, how do you boost repeat transactions in your website now? Are users okay. coming back again and again? So, we currently deal with uh, home electronics, mobile phones, accessories, those kind of products, which okay. typically uh, the customer retention will be happening in 90 days period, not uh, okay. they would come every month. So, okay. uh, the monthly retention is something that we are not uh, going after because it's it's not like a typical site where they come every day. Right, right. right. So, uh, so our, I, uh, our retention happens mainly through uh, the we give offers to our uh, existing customers oh, for new, new products and coupons okay. and something like that. Okay. So we we'll send uh, send them uh, targeted coupons where only the second time users or third time users. Right, right, right. So those things work for us. Nice. So uh, these coupons and offers that you are um, uh, giving out to retain users. So how do you communicate this with your users? Yeah, we use push notifications and uh, we use WhatsApp mm-hmm. uh, and we use emails okay. and also uh, we do use SMS, but these three are the major ways where we approach the customers. Okay, okay. And um, among webs, you have both website and app, right? So, Correct. what is the business share between website and app? Where you focus more? 90, 93% it comes through the app. Okay. Comes the website. Oh, super! That's that's very nice to hear. So, uh, in apps, how do you communicate with the users? 
who were just transacting via apps uh communicating in sense uh, the uh, well, like in app messages or you know it be used like not just of course not just even network is something that uh, right right we are yeah uh, and also we have videos uh, on top of the stories and everything okay. where we say how it works okay. what are the benefits of it and all those kind of things okay, okay. Uh, that helps a lot and uh, right. yeah those are the communication uh, things Super. and we have in app chat as well where people uh, get to us on okay uh, understanding more about it right so yeah um, as you said like in network we always talk about how uh, uh, smooth onboarding is very important uh, when you are uh, uh, so when you said videos you show videos to how this bidding works i think yeah yeah you are already on the right foot there yeah so nice wonderful to hear that so uh, what about the feedback system in your app do you have any feedback system how do you go about implementing your user feedback Uh, right now we have in app uh, notification uh, we send uh, a pop notification to get the feedback from, uh, mm-hmm. from the customer but mm-hmm. uh, we are working on email also but it doesn't have that much success rate oh okay but uh, we do app notifications and also uh, through calls we get to for we pick certain number of users okay to we interact with them to touch with the users personally and take their feedback that's right that's right okay. also i will send whatsapp calls to get uh, the feedback okay so a nice one i think it's, it's an automated feedback automated whatsapp oh automated messages okay super so i think it's very essential in the initial stages to uh, you know talk to your customers and see what they are actually feeling about your app and it's also a new concept so it's uh, it's wonderful that you're already uh, doing that talking to your customers personally as well morning my first routine is to do this <laughs> uh, sorry could you repeat that my day starts oh, okay <laughs> I go through all things. <laughs> that's that's the right way to start the day, I guess. <laughs> nice, wonderful. So, uh, this is user feedback. So, uh, what about the uh, seller feedback part? So, how are you ev- evaluating, you know, the uh, quality of products that is sold by the small stores or your sellers? Because your business is largely dependent upon them. So, any bad experience that they would uh, provide will uh, be a black mark on you. So, how are you ensuring the your seller's quality? So right now the sellers who were we are onboarding are highly curated, okay. and uh, we make sure that uh, we are properly guiding them in a I mean, like they are kind of I, offline part of Jingle Book. <laughs> right. So right. They on an everyday basis uh, we are in touch with them. Okay. And uh, we are make sure that uh, they are pricing the products in the right way. We have different types of uh, I mean like. Lot of tools in seller app as well, mm-hmm. uh, which give the information whether the pricing is right or wrong, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And also, they constantly upload products from the seller app, which okay. means uh, the curation process for that as well. Okay. So, uh, on the seller side, it's not like we onboard uh, a seller on a day. I mean, like uh, very uh, in this basis, but we make sure that we are strategically acquiring them. uh mm-hmm. with the right set of information and properly guiding them uh to give the core values which are the most important wonderful so this so there is no attrition rate or there is right. no right. because we are we take a, we take complete responsibility in empowering them okay okay so so this i should i think users can shop peacefully from your app <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> so um what are some of the struggles that you're facing as you are building the uh, business ha huh, so as it is a new platform there mm-hmm. is always a customer uh, trust issues are there because okay. uh, it's a, it's an e-commerce platform right at the right. end of the day uh, even uh, our uh, seniors like amazon flipkart would have had the same issue right. uh, creating the customer trust on my mm-hmm. because there are a lot of inconsistency for whatever they ordered or whatever they received those kind of right so here the main part is like we say that you receive this product from a local seller mm. which we don't right mm-hmm. so the product which are uh, been listed is highly curated and the seller is also highly curated and we take complete responsibility right. of the transaction so here the trust issue is something that we are facing right now but trust is something built upon uh, time time so, yep uh, it cannot be bought so right. 
that that, is, that would be a major challenge mm-hmm. uh, but we are doing all the efforts to get right right so uh, that's completely to trust is built over time and also uh, uh, by communication i feel through communication i think you'll have to constantly communicate to your users whatever you said right now how we are curating your sellers and you know if you constantly communicate that i think over the time uh, they'll not face these trust issues with uh, jingle bell right. and we are sending even cards uh, every delivery we are sending some uh, i mean like we send a card uh, okay. and thank you card we are sending you are supporting a local celebrity right right so right. that is something uh, that just upon so that's how we play trust right right nice wonderful to know that and uh, what are your plans uh, for scaling up this business in the future what do you have in store for this so we are all already in the scaling process currently uh, we are focused as majorly on tier 2 and tier 3 cities more than uh, metros because the we see a lot of potential over there and demand level is also huge mm-hmm. compared to uh, tier 1 cities because there is an inconsistency in supply chain over there okay. so uh, we are putting our base in pyathur uh, this month and uh, we are going to put uh, another base in madurai in uh, next two months right like this we are going to expand in all the tier 2 cities throughout the country so that's the focus for now okay so you are going to focus beyond tamil nadu also after that all right so far we are uh, delivering throughout tamil nadu on okay. the uh, i mean like uh, on the uh, customer side there's no issue okay but on the seller side we are going to acquire more of local sellers mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. right currently be focusing on prime to sell among the type to okay okay so even as you expand to other states so will you be mainly focusing only on a uh, tier 2 cities ha yes. so um, focus area is going to be tier 2 cities obviously but uh, the value proposition and everything is going to be same for everyone okay okay so um, there's no change on that but right uh, our business focus strategic business focus is going to be that right. okay okay nice so um you 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 uh, jingle bit all has also raised uh, funds recently uh, right so would you uh, talk about it a little bit it might be you know um, inspiring or if you if you can give some tips so whoever the budding entrepreneur watching this uh, interview will be uh, happy to know some tips from you yeah so funding uh, is just an uh, catalyst right so whatever if you do right uh, it's going to follow you mm-hmm. um, so first uh, the first round of funding we raised in 2020 mm-hmm. uh in spite of pandemic oh. um it, uh, in like september 2020 that's given us a proof of concept we raised 100k at the time and uh, later mm-hmm. one year after that we raised an uh, uh 500k okay. and right now we are in a bridge round uh, so Super shortly strong. we will uh, give the announcements so mm-hmm. that is it. so things are going good wonderful wonderful so on the funding part so only thing is uh, your basic metrics should be good and, exactly uh, and uh, you should be uh, i see a lot of uh, difficulty in where we reach out to the investors and uh, stakeholders right so okay. uh, we should use all the channels especially linkedin is a good uh, platform where right. we reach out to more more people as we can mm-hmm. and uh, don't go with an intention of selling i mean like i want to raise funds and those kind of things just have a call and have a casual conversation with them and uh, just let everyone let understand that you are running this this is what you want so things will happen wonderful wonderful so on that note do you have any other uh, tips for the budding entrepreneurs as well apart from the funding part ah uh, so yeah so one is that uh um many people build the business for fundraising or they think that funding is the major goal of uh, right. doing this so that shouldn't be the case mm-hmm. uh so uh, you can start with a proof of concept a small uh, working poc mm-hmm. and uh, that would be very much I mean like i started this jingle bit business as a whatsapp group oh uh, <laughs> Nice. I I sent it to everyone and said uh, whoever wants best price for whatever you're gonna buy, please uh, ping us. We'll try to get you the sellers for it, right? So uh, that will be a very small POC which is not dependent on tech or marketing or anything. Right, right. It's just a WhatsApp message. 
<laughs> that's a whatsapp message mm-hmm. you have to be so frugal on it and uh, once you get a validation of your idea mm-hmm. and then you can go after tech funding and everything but uh, it's something that saves your time and also your capital right so uh, that should be something that every entrepreneur should do a right. small proof of concept super i think that's one of the very very crucial uh, part even uh, one which we you know uh, the point that we tell repeatedly even in the webinars that we are organizing for early stage startups that your proof of concept or product market fit in the initial stages is very very important before you are uh, scaling up further so and you have also uh, said the same thing right so we have this cognitive bias right so hmm. we think that our idea is like something a billion dollar idea but right. <laughs> the market will respond differently but uh, you have to be very clear on what value you provide to the customer or definitely stable. yes yes definitely i think that's very very important nice so uh, we are almost at the uh, end of the interview and uh, i think uh, 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 whoever is listening to this interview especially the early stage startups will uh, you know gain a lot of uh, inputs and insights from this conversation and i i would like to you know thank you once again for uh, taking out time and uh, doing this interview uh, for us thank, thank you, you very so much pleasure. great uh, very much excited to see this and uh, people can reach out to me on linkedin as well uh, if, if there is something i can add value i'll yes. do it Yep. super super and i wish you all the best for you know the upcoming uh, plans for jingle bit that you just said it during this interview so wish you good luck yeah thank you <laughs>